accounting treatment. Like I mentioned before, the accounting treatment can could be in three different ways. One, where a separate set of books is kept for the joint venture. Two, there is no separate set of books and there is a memorandum joint venture account. And three, again, no separate set of books and there is no memorandum joint venture account. We shall discuss all three in great detail. But before we start, let us understand in very simple terms how profit for joint venture is asserting and how you decide what money is to be paid to the co-venturers at the end of the venture. I'll continue with the same example of Akash and Vikash who have started a joint venture of selling sweets for 10 days during the Navratri festival. So let us assume that Akash over the period of 10 days brings rupees 1 lakh worth of sweets. On the other hand, Vikash, let us say, brings in rupees 50,000 worth of sweets. Let us say they keep a person to help with the making of sweets, selling, etc. for the 10 days. And over the period of 10 days, they pay him rupees 25,000 for labor. Let us also assume, beside bringing sweets, they actually make some sweets there and therefore they buy milk, sugar and other supplies for let us say rupees 75,000 supplies, milk, sugar, whatever. Having said this, at the end of 10 days, if this is the situation, and let us assume that the entire sales throughout the 10 days was worth rupees 4 lakh, and let us also assume this whole money is being kept by Bikash since he has a better sense of numbers. So Bikash has collected 4 lakh worth of sales over a period of 10 days. Now, if we have to find out what is the profit on joint venture, it should be very simple. We know that the total sales is 4 lakh. What are the expenses involved? Expenses are Akash's expenses of 1 lakh 50,000, Bikash's expenses of 50,000. What is this? I'm sorry, 1 lakh and 50,000. Akash has brought sweets worth 1 lakh. Bikash has brought sweets worth 50,000. Then there were labor charges of 25,000. Other supplies were paid for 75,000. So totally we have spent 1 lakh plus 50 plus 25 plus 75, giving us 2 lakh 50,000. This is the expense 2 lakh 50,000. Therefore, the profit obviously is 1,50,000. Assuming they share the profits equally, we would get 75,000 would be Akash's share of profit and 75,000 would be Bikash's share of profit. It becomes very simple to ascertain the profit or loss for a joint venture, a simple joint venture like this. From an exam point of view, the other thing that we need to compute is how much money will ultimately be paid to Akash and how much money will be paid to Bikash. How do we decide this? Let us take Akash. Akash has already spent rupees 1 lakh. He will want to be reimbursed for this one. Next, he will want his share of profit of 75,000. 
So totally, Akash will want one lakh seventy-five thousand. What is the money that Vikash has with him? Vikash received four lakh from Sale. Just write this again. Four lakh from Sale. Yeah, he spent twenty-five thousand. on labor he spent 75000 on other supplies so that now he has only 3 lakh with him 3 lakh rupees with him out of this 3 lakh rupees 1 lakh 75000 was to be given to akash so what is the balance now left with him it is only 1 lakh 25000 would it be right to say that bikash share of the proceeds the cash that he would get at the end is 1 lakh 25000 bikash spent 50000 and his share of profit is also 75000 therefore totally the amount due to him is 1 lakh 25000 this would be how the final remittances are made this is how the cash settlement is made between the co-venturers you just subtract the expenses from the income to arrive at the profit and in the profit sharing ratio the profit is distributed among the co-venturers in order to find out what should be the remittance from one person to the other we would have to take into account the expenses which have already been paid by the particular co-venturer and also compensate him for his share of and also pay him his share of profit this in simple in a simple way this is what we do following double entry and preparing joint venture accounts under three different methods we shall go on to understanding of the accounting entries in the three different situations but in very simple language in a very in very basic terms very quickly we can compute profit on joint venture and also find out the remittance due to each person remittance to a person and from a person by analyzing the amount of expenses the amount of payments made by the co-venturers the sale proceeds etc like we mentioned before joint venture accounting we could have a separate set of books or no separate set of books what do we mean by having a separate set of books the joint venture has a separate set of books the books for only the joint venture if we do that usually we also open a separate joint bank account and therefore the accounts involved here would be a joint bank account a joint venture account and the co-venturers personal account but if a separate set of books is not kept for the joint venture then each co-venturer has to record these transactions in his own books when he does that when all the transactions whether he incurs expenses or he receives money or the other co-venturer incurs expenses or receives money all may be recorded in his own set of books in a co-venturer set of books in that case he prepares a joint venture account and the other co-venturers the joint venture account will give us the profit or loss and the co-venturers account will indicate how much money is to be paid to the co-venturer or received from the co-venturer again when a separate set of books is kept it is also possible that a co-venturer records only his own transactions only his own transactions if he receives money he records if he spends money on account of joint venture he records and he makes no record of the other co-venturers 
expenses receipts in that case he will need to prepare separately a memorandum joint venture account to find out his share of profit in the joint venture this of course does not form a part of the double entry it's a memorandum joint venture where he puts all the expenses on one side all the incomes on the other side and arrives at the total profit of the joint venture and then ascertains his own share of joint venture own share of profit ascertains his own share of profit now let us discuss each of these methods one by one 